kumparan ketemu lagi sama aku Anissa Sedino di kumparan interview jadi gini um, kamu pernah mikir nggak sih kayak kalau tiap kamu naik transportasi online terus kamu mesen lama kayak aduh ada berapa driver sini gitu terus ada berapa customer ya yang mesen transportasi online ini nah karena kumparan adalah jawaban kita udah punya jawaban nih sekarang sekarang di kantor kumparan kita kedatangan tamu tebak siapa ada senior vice president business intelligence of Gojek Indonesia Crystal Hello. <laughs> we say hi to the camera. Hello. Okay. So, Crystal, how old are you now? Um, so I'm 26. 26. Mm-hmm. I'm 26. Okay. Um, how did you get here? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so my parents are born in Jakarta, um, but I grew up in the states. I was born in the states mm-hmm. and kind of saw all of the startups that were going crazy, kind of in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Um, but I knew that I wanted to be able to have more impact and make a difference in the world in a more nuanced way. That wasn't just creating assisted living apps for millennials, um, mm-hmm. but we wanted to really impact change. So I actually uh, went on LinkedIn and I googled HR at Gojek yeah. and I saw Monica's name pop up and I sent her an email and I said, are you looking for someone to head up a business intelligence mm-hmm. unit at Gojek? If so, I'm willing to move. So one week later, I moved to Indonesia for Gojek. Wow. Yes. That's simple, I mean. <laughs> that simple. So that one, that's how, that's what made that's you decide. That's two years ago. Yep. Two years ago, and that's what made you decide to go back to Indonesia. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw how much impact and potential Gojek had on the lives of their drivers, um, and just increasing the lives of people in Jakarta because of all the traffic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I knew that this was something I wanted to do and have impact on. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, so you live in California since you were born? Right? Since I was born. Since yeah. Born. First time I came to Jakarta was in 2015 in May. Okay. Okay. So you're, now you're the senior vice president of business intelligence yep. of Gojek Indonesia. For two years. Yep. Do you use the application like every day or? Every single day. Like <laughs> I use it multiple times per day actually. Uh-huh. So I use it. Um, I use GoRide twice a day to get to work and then back home. Uh-huh. I order a GoFood on it. I top up my Pulsa with uh-huh. it. So which one do you use the most? Definitely go ride. I just, I can't stand traffic okay. in Jakarta, so I'm always Everybody on a does. motorcycle. Yep. Okay, so, but, but you, you love to use GoFood? Go, go food, food is like a lifesaver. I like, don't know what I would eat without GoFood. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so do you use GoPay? Of course. Of no. course. Cashless society. I mean, <laughs> this is like on the brink of uh-huh. being part of the digital ecosystem. Um, GoPay is something that is making our lives so much more simple, right? I don't need cash. I don't need to pay the driver yeah. all the time with yeah. just cash. I can tip the driver in the app. Okay, so how much you spend like money like rupiah for go, for GoPay? Oh man, I think I probably top up like two or three million a month and, and spend that constantly. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you just top up your GoPay with like two million? All the time, yep. All the time? All the time. Okay, so okay, right now you're one of the leaders in Gojek Indonesia, mm-hmm. um, and you're the part of the business intelligence. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, can you explain what this division means to you? Yeah, and totally. It's all about? Um, so I head up the business intelligence and the growth teams at Gojek. Mm-hmm. Um, so from the business intelligence side, what that means is we're building data foundations and data tools for other people in the company to use. Yeah. So we build data visualizations, we build yeah. self-serve ad hoc tools. Okay. So let's say you're a product owner on GoFood and you want to know, you know, this merchant that I recruited yesterday, how are they doing? Mm-hmm. So you can just go into one of our web tools and just type in the, that merchant's name and you'll instantly get all of the details about mm-hmm. you know, their orders in the past week, how many customers they've had. Mm-hmm. And this way it allows people to make their strategic decisions on their own independently without waiting for someone on my team to like, answer their, their email or something like that. Um, so we're constantly looking for these nuggets of insights. Uh, we create the reports that automatically go to people's emails. And then when we're not fielding these questions from the business units, we are constantly digging through the data to try to find like, okay, what are those weird correlations that we can uh, use as opportunities to improve the business? Oh, wow. So it's all about data and details. All about data, exploring, being curious, um, and just being very creative about, you know, 
what do these two pieces of supposedly unrelated data points mean? Um, how can we tie them together? And then how can we understand the relationship between the two of them? Okay, so what did you find from the data? Yeah, so we found a lot of really interesting things. Um, I think it's, how many things can I say here uh, <laughs> on this? But there, there's a, quite a lot of uh, interesting insights that we've found. Um, I think related to like food, we do notice like around New Year's, um, for example, a lot of people will try to be a bit more healthy. They'll look at the healthy options. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times, those people end up going back to fast food. Uh, <laughs> so we see their intentions, but then they yeah. end up ordering that fast food anyways. Um, and then a lot of these insights have actually come out during our Ramadan blog posts mm -hmm. when we saw you know, a lot more traffic going to the mosques uh, in Jakarta during uh, that holiday. And then the different hours that people were ordering food was very in line with uh, the Ramadan. Okay, so um, it's all about human behavior too, right? Exactly. So we're constantly looking at, you know, how do people interact with the app and what are the different ways that they're using us so that we can improve their experience and get uh, more use cases. How many people downloaded the Gojek application Ooh, so far? Good question. Um, so since July of this year, over 50 million people have downloaded the Gojek app. <gasps> For the Android or 50 iOS. million, both Android and iOS. We have over 300,000 drivers across Indonesia. We're open in, in 50 cities. Um, so there are 50 places where you can order a go ride or a go car. Okay, so what will you do with all the passengers' data and mm -hmm. with all the drivers' data mm -hmm. in the future? Yeah, so we're always constantly using data to improve our services. Um, so we use it to optimize things like, you know, how. How long should people have to wait you know, at a mall? Do we need to open you know, a Gojek shelter here? Uh, what kind of benefits would our drivers want to have? So we have like a Swadaya program. So all of the data helps to guide our decision making and strategy so that we can offer the right incentives to the right consumers at the right time. Okay, so it's for consumers, it's for customers, it's for customers and, for and drivers, of course. Oh, that's, that's quite lovely. Okay. Um, so you know what's the most important thing in Gojek right now besides the data and all of the details, like maybe payment for information, like payments and mm -hmm. everything else. And you know, do you enjoy the moment when you when you saw this big data, and and you, you know you learn from it. Your t your team learn a lot from it mm -hmm. about the human behavior in Indonesia. You know, what do you feel? Yeah, I think it's really inspiring to be able to see that what's happening in society is actually reflected in our data. Mm -hmm. So during Ramadan, when we suddenly saw this spike in, in the P2P peer, peer payments, um, you know, people were actually doing a to uh, mm -hmm. to each other using GoPay, which was like a use case that we hadn't even realized would, would be common yet mm -hmm. because GoPay was so new. But people mm -hmm. were already self-adopting this. Yeah. Uh, you could see people paying one another for food that they wanted to deliver. Um, it was a really exciting experience to know that we are so ingrained in people's lives that they're using us on a daily basis and creating new use cases that we didn't even think about yet. Yeah, because you know, uh, GoPay makes life easier. You know, yes. it's a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. I mean, you agree with that? Yes. I mean, I've like <laughs> left my wallet at home a few times, and I didn't have to worry because I was, I, I have GoPay. It's fine. Like, I can get myself back anywhere uh, without my wallet. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's it's the same like. GoPay is another own, your own saving, mm -hmm. right? It's exactly. Saving. Gojek and GoPay saved my life so many <laughs> times. Save our lives. Yes. Thank you so much, Gojek. Thank you so much. Okay, so how many people are working in a business intelligence yeah. section? So the business intelligence team and growth teams are now about 45 people. Yeah, it's quite a lot. Yeah. Um, so I was wow. data hire number one at Gojek uh, two years ago. And since then, you know, we've, we've kept hiring because as the data grows and as we launch new features, there's been a need for more people to try to dig even more insights and figure out how do we push the product to the next level, right? Okay, uh, 45 people in Singapore too? Uh, so my team is entirely in Jakarta. Oh, in Jakarta, so mm -hmm. in Singapore? I don't actually have any team members in uh, the Singapore office. So our Singapore office is um, mainly owns our data science unit, um, but we do have some data scientists joining us in Jakarta pretty soon. Oh, it's data scientists, you know. Yeah. It's kind of difficult when you think about it. Data science like is it's a, all about data, data, it's a data, crazy, data. yeah, it's, it's really, data science is all about optimizing and really pushing forward those small incremental returns, building models, um, tuning and performing uh, 
on a very high level. It's something that I personally don't have the patience for a lot of the times. There are definitely better people at it than me in the really? team. Yeah. I, for me, I personally love optimizing and doing quick wins um, in the business. So, so in the business intelligence team, we're constantly looking for, okay, where are those areas of opportunity where the business can expand mm -hmm. or can develop something very quickly or nudge drivers or customers to perform a bit better? We're always looking at quick wins, low hanging fruit. In daily, in daily, so what kind of service that people use the most from Gadget? Yeah, definitely our go ride is, is probably the most popular service. Um, okay. So fun fact, actually in Q3 of 2017, we did as many go rides as we did in the entire year of 2016. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So the growth has been just incredibly insane. Wow, that's mm -hmm. very insane. So having to build data architecture uh -huh. and systems that can scale with this type of growth, we keep saying to ourselves like, oh, we, Gojek can't possibly grow any faster, but it keeps doing that. Okay, so you have to keep up with that. Yeah, we have to keep up. We have to build a lot of really scalable systems. Um, a lot of my time is really spent with uh, designing the architecture that we have for our data lakes, uh, how we can create systems for complex event processing. Oh, okay. um, there's a lot of fun systems. That's fun. Architecture, yeah. As long as you like it, it's fun. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, uh, the average distance and time that yeah. people spend using Gojek? Yeah, so I think our, our most common distances are you know, between 5 to 10 kilometers. Mm -hmm. um, for GoSend, it's, it's actually a bit longer. I think it's because most people are using GoSend because they don't want to travel so far uh, to deliver something. Okay. But yeah, most people do 5 to 10 kilometers on average. And the time of the day? Um, so our most common peak hours are obviously the commute peak hours, uh -huh. um, but every service has their own peaks and their own lows. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for the time is like maybe at like the rush hours. Six a.m. Yeah. Six a.m. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So people here go uh, go to work very early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like Gojek <laughs> is very startup like, so we don't really start until like ten, ten thirty. <laughs> yeah. Um, the most visited place. Yeah, so uh, what I love about Gojek is that we're not just like that full transport option. We're not just like sending packages. We're mm -hmm. actually that last and first mile for most people. So the most common pickups and drop-offs are actually train stations and busways. Oh. Um, so most okay. people actually use us to get to the train. They go to the train. They take it to the center of the city. And then they take uh, and then Gojek yeah. again to get to the office. So we're oh, very okay. often we're that last mile and that first mile. Uh, on the weekends, you know, the, the most common places are exactly what you would think. They're malls. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they love to go to malls. Everyone loves to go to malls in Jakarta, <laughs> right? Well, 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 five to ten kilometers, and you're using Gojek to the rail train station and mm -hmm. from the bus station, mm -hmm. not from the office. Um, the oh. offices are definitely a common pickup. However, there's not like a single mm -hmm. office that is mm -hmm. the most picked up. Okay, so what mm -hmm. do you think that people love, Indonesians, Indonesian people love to go to the mall? Why? I think the malls are a really good place for people to congregate and, and meet up with friends. Um, mm. Yeah. And less a lot of discounts. Eh? Also that. <laughs> yeah. The malls here are definitely a lot better than in the US. Really? Actually. How yeah. come? Um, the movie theaters here are oh. amazing. Okay. Um, the malls here are a lot fancier and a mm -hmm. lot more developed than in the US. Okay, yeah. so where do you live in the US? So I lived in San Francisco and San I've lived in San Jose. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, after Jakarta, was the second city with the, the largest? The second most, common, most popular city? I think that would be Bandung. Yeah, Bandung. but just by size. Yeah, Okay. so it's pretty closely related to the size of the city. Okay, like give me five. Oh, I don't memorize the top five, unfortunately. <laughs> but I know Jakarta's three, on top. Three, three. Jakarta, Bandung, I think maybe Surabaya is after. Surabaya, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Bali? So Bali is definitely top five, but I'm not sure where. Okay, yeah. Okay. so there's Jakarta, Bandung, Surabaya, and Bali. Hmm. Okay, with the largest customers. Okay, mm -hmm. um, Okay. for the go ride and a go car, what type of of brand, what kind, and is it manual, manual transportation or automatic transportation huh. that uh, that Gojek use the most? Mm -hmm. So I think that the manual versus automatic transmission mm -hmm. that is going to be pretty close to the ratio of whatever is in Indonesia as well. I think <laughs> so. It's probably exactly the same. Personally, I prefer manual. Um, okay. 
but I'm pretty sure that the ratio, it's not something that we discriminate by. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And the brand? Brand. Oh, I don't know that one. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I don't it's know. okay, Mas Adit, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, okay, you, you can Yeah, tell us I, the no, I actually don't know. Like I could look that up, but I but, definitely didn't memorize it. Okay, but I guess I know what what type of brand it is. It must be whatever is most popular. Right now. <laughs> like, the, our data is not going to dramatically differ from the general population. Okay. Okay, uh the average age of the Gojek driver. Ooh, I also did not look that up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think we, we have drivers from as young as 18 to as old as I believe like 50 years old. Yeah, we have some regulations on how old a driver can be to okay. be a safe driver. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it's around 55, right? I think the maximum age is around 50. Is it 50? Yeah. 50, okay. What kind of item that people love to send? Oh, what do people love to send? Yeah. So unfortunately, people aren't that descriptive when they send go send items. Um, <laughs> so I think the most common item that people are sending is just bag. Bag. It just says tas. Tas. Are you sending a tas? Uh-huh. Mm. And then? That's it. Like people just send tas. <laughs> Makanan. Tas. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's it. Okay. So, um, favorite food? Favorite food yeah. on go food? Yeah. Oh my God. I think, so the most common dishes are rice dishes. The local rice dishes are the most popular. Uh -huh. And then close second, martabak. Martabak. Yeah, we've sent three million martabaks in the past year. Three million martabaks. So, uh, so in one day, you send how many martabaks you send in one day? Oof. I don't know. We have to do the math on that, but it's, yeah. Wait, there's three million martabaks in a year. In in the in the year so far. Three million. Yeah, so far. So yeah. there's room to grow. Order those martabaks. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, the first is everything with rice, right? Yes, everything with rice. Okay, and it's second, and second is more. And third, third I think is. Hey, like, can you give me like five pizza? Pizza. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Pizza and fourth. I don't remember. I only know the Fifth, top three. Don't remember. Okay. I know the top three. So it's like nasi, nasi, martaba, pizza, mm -hmm. pizza. Okay, and the top selling merchants. Oh, so. I actually really love this, is that our top selling merchants are the local merchants. Um, so Pisang oh. Goreng Bunanik has seen incredible growth through the GoFood platform. So oh. she is constantly at number one. She, we've been sending a lot of fried bananas throughout Jakarta. Wow. Yeah. Number two, um, the closer, the other merchants who are pretty close to the top of the list are actually um, a lot of the local coffee shops. So Tuku, has seen some phenomenal growth, especially oh. after Jokowi did a, a <laughs> visit. Yeah, yeah, we saw that. Mm -hmm. So, oh, Tuku is the second. Tuku is pretty And close. the third place, maybe? You can um, so I don't know exactly all the merchants okay. <laughs> okay. in top 10, but those are the two that I know are consistently top 10. So pisang goreng and Tuku. local coffee. Local coffee. Tuku. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I was still thinking about the martabak thing, you know. Still thinking about how many how many Marta Pakistan like every day? Yeah. How many people? It's pretty crazy. And what do you think that people in Jakarta, I mean, mm -hmm. people in Indonesia love Marta What do you think? I mean, it's a pretty delicious dish, right? You have all the layers of, of sugar and, and chocolate and cheese, and then there are savory ones as well. It makes me hungry thinking about it, actually. Okay, <coughs> okay this is for the GoPay section. Sure. From the total subscribers of Gojek, what per, uh, the percentage of people that use GoPay? Yeah, so actually over half of all of our orders are being paid with GoPay right now. So we uh -huh. see amazing adoption on GoPay. I love it because it's, you know, it's a safer tr transactional method. It's mm -hmm. easier. You don't have to like mess around with like, oh, I need change with my driver. Mm -hmm. um, so GoPay for me is, is one of those revolutionary products that I'm really proud of. How, how many people use GoPay right now? For Over 50% every day. Every day? Yep. Over half of our orders. Or maybe it's just, you know, people use GoPay for the discounts or? Yeah. We do yeah. have discounts on GoPay. Top up your GoPay. Uh, it starts from like 30 or 50%. Um, uh, 30 to 50% discount, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And right now it's 30 or 50? Uh, that is a good question. I don't know. It's so cheap that I don't actually <laughs> check or care. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but it's over 50%, mm -hmm. right? And the most preferred GoPay top up method? Um, the method. So our cash top up by driver is actually mm -hmm. huge. So we okay. see 
thousands of people topping up with our drivers every single day. So you just oh, wow. hand the driver cash, he tops uh -huh. up your GoPay balance, and suddenly you have GoPay in your account. Okay, well, yeah. and the person, but the presentation for people who top up their GoPay through the through drivers. Yes, I do not know. I just know it's very common. It's very common. Yeah, but it's uh, one of the top three uh, top up methods is top up through driver. Through driver, and from the ATM. How about, what about the ATM? So we don't actually, or I think we're not able to distinguish between mm -hmm. those methods. Yeah. Okay, we we would like to know the percentage of people who gave tips yes. to the driver. Yes. Okay. So I really liked this about the Ramadan season. We saw a lot more people giving out tips than usual. Mm -hmm. um, so in just 2017 alone, uh, so far we have given out five million USD <gasps> in tips to drivers. So this money goes directly to drivers. It helps their livelihoods every single day. You know, they're getting extra income from our customers who offer them tips. Wow, that's a lot. That's a big. Gojek helps save people's lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, so five, five, uh, five, million, uh, five million. Five million USD. <laughs> okay, so this is now for the go massage. Yeah. Do you love to use this service? Yes, I do <laughs> love Go Massage. It's a good weekend uh, treat to myself. Treat yourself. Yeah, yeah. We can we can call one of them to Kumparan right now to give mm -hmm. us a sweet mm -hmm. massage, sweet massage on the back, you know. <laughs> and uh, for this service, uh, mm -hmm. how many people that use this service? In hmm. Jakarta. Yeah, so Go Massage is a pretty popular product. I don't know the exact number, mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely something that is very commonly used, especially on the weekend. On the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, is it women or men? Um, so on the on Go Massage, you can actually choose, you know, your your gender preference, and based on that, we are always choosing, you know, the right professional for your okay. service. Okay, uh, and for the people who order, mm -hmm. is it? woman or hmm. men? I'm pretty sure Ooh. it's both genders. Anyone Ooh. can get a massage. Oh yeah. You can get a massage everywhere, anytime. Anywhere, right? anytime. Users are ordering different gender therapists like you said mm -hmm. before. So yeah, it's, it's all up to the user's preference and we make sure you know all of our masseuses are professional and up to standards mm -hmm. and we abide by those preferences. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So now this is for the business intelligence for mm. growth. Okay. It is going to be a little hard. In Gojek, what ways that has been done using big data to mm -hmm. improve the company's performance mm -hmm. and user loyalty? Yeah, so we are constantly looking at all of the data to ensure that every product has the right data to improve the strategy for their product. Um, so we give them access to understand, you know, how are people interacting with my app? You know, what buttons are they clicking? What flows are they using to complete an order? How are they looking for their favorite merchant on GoFood? Um, so we are constantly providing these insights to the business teams so that they can figure out what features to prioritize or what products to build um, based on this data. We also use this data to understand our drivers a bit better and their preferences. So our Swadaya initiative mm -hmm. allows us to understand what kind of things are important for drivers to have. What are some benefits that we can provide? Uh, Pulsa data discounts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I'm very, you know, the business intelligence team, your team, is it's really amazing, you know, it's amazing. And how did you analyze all the data and mm -hmm. all the metric with your own way? Yeah, so I, I have an amazing team, first of all. Um, so our team is really focused on something that we call the North Star metric. So the North Star metric is what is the one metric that everyone in the company is rallying around mm -hmm. and becomes our goal. So for us, it's number of completed orders. And then from there, we look at, okay, what are the metrics that matter to this North Star metric? Mm -hmm. And from there, we say, okay, well, the metrics that matter for GoFood might be, you know, how many merchants do we have on our platform? And today we have over, you know, 100,000 merchants across these 50 cities. Uh, okay. For GoRide, it might be, you know, uh, how many people make an order on, on GoRide? Things like that. So it's it's all about understanding, you know, what is that core metric that we want to focus on? What is the North Star metric? And then what are the metrics that matter to each product? Okay, so that's how you speed up the users once, you know. Mm -hmm. Like Yeah. Because every vertical is, is so different, 
It mm -hmm. requires us to think very strategically about the user experience for a product like GoPulsa versus the user experience for something like GoTix. We can't treat them all the same. So we give every product has its own metrics that matter, its own user activity flows. So how many metrics do you have? I mean, uh, that's a lot. I mean. Yeah, I think just for transport, we're, we're already tracking over 90 metrics just for transport. Yeah. 90 metrics just yep. for transport? Every week, we look at these 90 metrics. Every week? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speechless. Yes. 90 metrics. It's a lot to keep an eye on. OK, 90 metrics for 45. Just for transport. Just for. And uh, the whole, I mean, for the whole metric? I can't count. <laughs> I'd okay. have to consolidate that. I mean, I'm sure there's thousands. We have thousands of metrics overall. Um, oh. Yeah. We're a very data driven company. Yeah, of course. That was, that made Gojek is mm -hmm. just a big company right now. Right? Mm -hmm. OK, so. Um, what steps did Gojek take in using big data to improve driver partners' welfare? Mm -hmm. So for us, I think the, the one that I really want to drive home is the Swadaya initiative, mm -hmm. because we're constantly looking out for the drivers. What can we do to help them um, in the field? What can we do to help them at home? We have a really comprehensive driver benefits program. We provide them with insurance. We, we help you know provide Chichilan programs as well. Mm -hmm. um, so for drivers, we're we look at their welfare, we ensure that they're making enough money to, to live by in every city. Okay, so like more than 1,000 drivers got insurance and mm -hmm. other, other things for their life, right? Okay, and now for the user's personal data. Mm -hmm. How do you keep the big data user for not breaking the personal data of your customers? Mm -hmm. um, so we keep data security very tightly knit. Um, so no one can really check on a single user. Except? No, no one. one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Um, I guess that would be really dangerous. So we keep data privacy very secure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, you know, it keeps in a big, like, this kind of bank, bank, uh, the, the mm -hmm. data bank. Everyone it would be anonymized by, like, a customer ID. A special question for you. Hmm. Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> no one here to help. No, no one here to help. I don't. <laughs> Why? Yeah, I saw this question on Twitter actually. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Yeah. No. You don't, you don't have one. No. Or maybe you don't have two. <laughs> you don't have three. Or? <laughs> no, I don't. For sure not. <laughs> okay. Uh, no. You don't have. I'm one. I'm I'm married to my work. <gasps> that is just something. I'm married to my work too. I'm married to Kumparan. Kumparan mm. is my husband. Ah, yeah. I love you, Kumparan. Okay, so <laughs> I'm curious. I'm curious, really. Like I, I feel like I have a lot to learn still. Um, so I'm really focused on just working, working, mm. and you know, going to tech meetups or or googling new technology. Maybe you saw someone at tech meetups like, oh my god, this one is handsome. Like no. <laughs> mm, not really. <laughs> okay, so uh, second question: Why you don't have any social media account? Yes, yeah. Um, so I am very not good at social media. Actually, yeah, really? I'm not really good at social media. I don't have an Instagram. I don't have a Snapchat. Um, I do have Facebook. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, you, you, and yeah, I don't know. You don't, but you don't have Twitter, right? No. People can stalk you. You want to stalk you. Yeah. What is Crystal doing right now? Yeah. Like everybody's asking, yeah. everybody's thinking, where are you right now? What mm -hmm. are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like why? Why why you're not good with social media? I guess I feel like I don't want to be distracted when I have so many things I need to learn or read. Mm. Um, so in my free time mostly I'm just kind of reading different programming books or different theory books. Oke okay, teman-teman kita baru aja ngobrol sama Mbak Crystal Wijaya, the Senior Vice President of Gojek Indonesia. Buat teman-teman yang mau lihat video lainnya, lihatnya di sini. Buat teman-teman yang mau subscribe di sini. Oh, sorry. Nah, oh. it's here. <laughs> Buat teman-teman yang mau komen di sini. <laughs> Oke, okay, bye. Bye, Crystal. Bye.